I think the um, single greatest part about being in our industry is having the ability to impact people both in the dining room and in the kitchen and the sense of community from the farmer to the table and everything in between. I love the freedom to take the bare ingredients and then pretty much create my own creation. I mean, it's kind of redundant, but you know, I get to just go in every day and whatever comes to my crazy head, I get to create and put it on a dish. And it's just that freedom and that imagination that, you know, that I can do that you're not going to be able to do in any other career. Um, I love being a chef in the industry because, um, I mean, it sounds kind of cliche, but just the, the camaraderie and the team aspect behind it. I mean, very few professions provide such a high-pressured, challenging work environment that you have to operate as one unit or you don't become successful. So the, um, the family-orientated team and community that's driven from the kitchen is very inspiring to me. Well, you know, I particularly like being a chef in Austin. Um, over the past 10 years, lots of really, really cool things have been happening here. Um, so to be a part of that, to help drive that process and kind of feed off each other has been a blast. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, I truly love the creativity process that, that goes into being a chef, from procuring the produce to making the dish to ultimately delivering it to the customer. I make sweets for a living, so I love that I get to basically make people happy or serve people who are already happy. Um, it's very easy to wait on our customers and stuff because they're always um, coming into La Patisserie because they've heard about us, they've heard good things about us and want to try it or they're coming back again. Um, and Austin's just a great city to make food for. Um, man, that is... A great question. I love just food in general. I mean, you just creating anything, you know, you get all the ingredients together, you know, just just food, just the ingredients, making it come together, composing plates, making artwork out of it, you know, because people definitely eat with their eyes before anything. So if it looks beautiful in front of you, it's going to be amazing. Work hard. You can't get anywhere in this industry if you haven't put in the long days and the long nights and um, everything in between. Uh, I think it's. I think a lot of young people come in very naive and think that oh yeah, I want to own my own thing, but they have no idea what's involved. Um, and so basically, I mean, working hard is the only way to get anywhere. Well, you know, a lot of people think that being a chef, you know, isn't that hard. But the reality is it's one of the more difficult um, fields out there. So, you know, you need to realize that you're going to be working every single day, long hours, every single holiday. Um, there's lots of commitment that comes along with it. Uh, if you're not bringing the passion every single day, every single moment, if you're not driving your employees and ultimately your customers, then you're not going to make it. It really takes hard work and dedication. I mean, there's countless, you know, when I leave the restaurant, my work doesn't really ever stop. I'm spending time on the internet, reading, trying to research. It's always, it's never ending. So it's just hard work, passion. You always got to push yourself and, and try to learn something new. I mean, even if you don't have somebody teaching you, you have to, you have to be willing to teach yourself. And it's just long hours and it's a, it's a whole, whole mindset. Just make sure you want to do that before anything um, it's a very tough industry um, and if you're really put your mind towards it in your head and the hours and effort you're going to become successful and great because uh, it is a lot of work you really have to think on your feet every second every minute of every day about food about if something goes wrong how to fix it how to make it work how to make something great so it's you got to really be dedicated to do it if not, then it's not going to work out. Be patient. Um, understand that there is a, a long process that has to take place before you can reach a level of, of chef that, that people can uh, that people see um, you as that place. Um, so be patient um, and be understanding of the process. It's we we preach it all the time that if. Um, there's no shortcuts. You have to really believe in that process and, and trust your chef or trust the restaurant or the environment that you're in to get to your goals, to get to your goals, to reach the end result of becoming a chef. I think that, uh, especially nowadays, it's people are in way too big of a hurry to gain that title and have really no experience behind it. And then they kind of flutter and 
and fail because there's no real basis to their ambition. So you've got to have that uh, that knowledge and study a lot. Obviously, read the books and um, be very clear on what you want and set that goal and then find a place that you can reach that goal. Um, but yeah, trust the process. So passion, sense of urgency, and attention to detail are paramount. If you don't have those, then there's no way you're going to be a success in this industry. We like people who are quiet, um, we like people who work hard, and we like people who care. And so we ask everyone to join us for a stagiaire for a day or two, and we look very quickly about how clean they are, um, how quiet they are, and if they if they care and if they pay attention to what they're doing and kind of the, what you teach them and show them what to do. We don't care about speed. Uh, we don't care how much they know because you can learn everything. But if you you can't teach someone to care or to work hard. Um, mainly personality, outgoing, dependability, um, knife skills, definitely um, eagerness, just the you know willing to learn and giving it your all. Pretty much just, you know, having a great attitude about everything. You know, just a great aspect on food, life in general, just being excited about cooking. Um, I want them to look clean. I want them to not have their cell phone ring even once during the interview. <laughs> if you have an emergency, don't show up to the interview and let me know. Um, but they just need to have a I, I tell people I look for a twinkle. Um, and it's just, we make, because we make sweets, you have to love it. If you don't love it, then it comes through in the end product. And so um, I really want to see kind of when I ask them what's your favorite thing to make, they shouldn't have to stutter about it. They should know, oh, I love doing this. If you ask me what my favorite thing to make is, macarons. I'll say that every time, any time, uh, without hesitation. So that's the main thing is just a real true passion. And I want to be able to see it in them. Um, we hire character above skill all the time. Uh, more more than um, skill really can come through the trade and come, you know, you can gain the skill and the experience within the kitchen, but we can't build your character. We can't build your work ethic. We can't teach you the difference between showing up on time. I mean, that all has to be within the person. So we, um, we look for that through our interview process more than anything else. Skill, I can teach you how to cook as long as you come with the willingness to learn. Um, so if you don't have that, then it's really difficult to bridge those gaps. It's really that they show their how, like how interested they are in the restaurant. They've maybe done some research and uh, what they're stepping into. You know, they're maybe familiar with our food, even if they haven't had the opportunity to eat there. They just kind of looked at our menu beforehand. It's something I always do before I go to interview, just so they know what um, they're getting into. And then as they stage, that they're you know they're showing that they understand. There's a little sense of urgency. There's a that they're that they're interested in what we're doing and just that in pastries in general. Work ethic means everything to me uh, because if you don't work hard then you're not gonna then it's you're wasting your time and my time you know it's it's everything you're the will you know the eagerness again to work is so strong and so important I mean if you want to come in early and work for free, that is just so awesome. I mean, I just think that's the greatest thing and I used to love doing that back in the day and if I still had a chance to do it, I would. Work ethic to me is bringing 110% every single day, 24-7. Um, it's not just when you're at work, it's also when you're not at work. If you're not constantly thinking about your craft as a chef, then you're not doing it the justice it deserves. I think work ethic is it's your overall demeanor. It's how you conduct yourself from your interview moment to kind of getting the job and continuing the job. Um, loyalty, uh, I think, is part of work ethic. Um, staying early or coming coming in early and staying late helps. Um, kind of willingness to do whatever, whatever you need to do to get the job done and excel and do really well in the position that you're hired for. Work ethic means to me um, going above and beyond the job or the call of duty on a daily basis without having to be asked and without anybody watching. I think um, some people are born, born with a natural 
instinct of what a good work ethic is. Um, others can acquire that through life lessons. Um, but in a kitchen, it's an absolute um, requirement because without a substantial dedicated work ethic, um, the kitchen stumbles and, and falls apart very, very quickly. So um, work ethic is, is going above and beyond without being asked or with nobody watching. It goes back to you know being successful. It's really about you know pushing yourself, um, coming in early, or you know I get there at seven o'clock in the morning. Um, not necessarily because I have to, but because I want to. I want to be the first one in the door, and it's just you know you know fixing the problems that need to be fixed. You know trying to come up with new dishes, being creative, always striving to be the best, and uh, you know push yourself and try new things, and not really settling for you know. Just the ordinary. I think work ethic just means you make the right decisions for yourself and the people around you. And regardless of the day and the weather and uh, what it means, you always make the right decisions. My biggest pet peeve when interviewing is when uh, um, a student or an applicant comes in and uh, usually one of the first questions I ask is, so what do you know about Congress? What do you know about Congress Austin or Second Market Kitchen? And they say, um, well, I know that it's a restaurant. And kind of right away, if, if an individual is willing to put the energy and time into choosing this as their career or even job is fine, um, but I would never walk into a situation that I didn't research about what I was about ready to do, or at least have a basic knowledge of where you're applying. Um, that's a big pet peeve, especially, I mean, when people don't even, there's all the information you need is all right online, and to not take two minutes to read anything about where you're applying is a huge pet peeve. I usually stop the interview right away and say thank you very much, and have a nice day. So my biggest pet peeve is when people don't know the basics. You know, you go to culinary school, if you don't know your primary sauces, if you don't know how to make chicken stock, then just get out of my kitchen. I mean, really, at the end of the day, if you don't know your basics, you have no business being in a kitchen whatsoever. <laughs> when people tell me they want to own their own cafe, <laughs> everyone wants to own their own thing. But if you just come in and say, look, I'm really looking to just get my feet wet, figure out if this is an industry I love or not. Um, but everyone seems to want to say, one day I want to open up my own. I understand that. Uh, that's, why, that's why you got into this, that's why you did the schooling you did, that's why you're looking for the job, but give me more than that. Um, and then cell phones. Cell phones and telling me you want to open your own business. It's really the day when they, you know, they come unprepared, they haven't done any research about the restaurant, they like, don't really know what kind of food we do, they come in, they don't have pen and paper, you know, they don't even have their tools with them. It's just like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't go to any other kind of interview without you know, being properly prepared. And it's like the kitchen, it's a different world, but the same, same rules apply. Like you come prepared, you gotta bring your notebook and your pen just so that you know, if I give you a recipe, you can, you can write it down and you can go with it. When people call me dude <laughs> or man, you know, I don't, I don't ask for chef. No one really called me chef, but at least call me Sean or some level of respect. So I'm not anyone. My standard line used to always be, after an interview, would be, I'm not your f***ing bro, I'm not your f***ing man, and I'm not your f***ing friend. So you can call me Sean or you can call me chef. Um, that, that still bothers me, but now I don't really give the whole spiel anymore. But I used to give it. Oh, biggest pet peeve. Uh, when they ask for too much money. Because when, you know, either you're coming out of school or if you have, you know, some ex some experience, you know, um, you've been cooking for a couple years um, and you, you know, they ask for, you know, a certain amount that's ludicrous. That's kind of annoying to me. I'm like, yeah, it's not going to happen. Sorry. <laughs> you have to, I mean, we can sell you here and go from there. But that's just, yeah, I, I just think it's just asinine. But yeah. It's the ability to, you know, come in on the stars, and even though you're in a new place, new environment, you're unfamiliar. Um, even if you haven't, haven't been in the kitchen before, it's that you can use your common sense and solve some of the problems by yourself. Instead of asking me, like after I've told you, you know, where we keep our equipment, 
And instead of, like, I was asking me, where is this, where is this? Like, you kind of will find it yourself. And, you know, you, know, you kind of will try to do things a little bit independent, um, show that you understand, you know, a little bit of how the kitchen works. Um, you kind of will move with a little sense of urgency, a little bit of speed. I think you can tell almost everything about everybody almost immediately. And when someone looks for, looks at you very earnestly and they say that they want to work hard and that they'll do what they need to do to be successful and they just want an opportunity, you can read it in their face and, and then it becomes very easy because you get excited to have them be a part of your team. Ooh, what would? Um, you know, someone that has worked overseas with someone, one of the greats, you know, um, Spain, France, you know, Australia, China, something like that, you know, with one one of the master chefs of the world or someone, you know, with three Michelin star restaurant for something like that, you know, really would stand out. That would be like, oh, absolutely. Come on in. Definitely. Let's, uh, let's do it. Let's cook. Uh, besides that, I mean, you know, just being excited about work. Um, kind of the op uh, the opposite about um, the pet peeve, you know, the person that takes the time and is diligent about researching who we are as a company or who we are um, as a restaurant or even personally who I am as a chef to, to take the time and um, really research where you're applying. And um, I've had guys that have um, saved up enough money to eat in Congress and then during the interview they've mentioned and quoted certain dishes or their experience or even if you just come in for a burger, they're... Um, the experience within our restaurant or being able to talk about restaurants or talk about food experiences um, is always very impressive because it's it shows their dedication to their path um, uh, and it shows that it's more than a job to them so that's always impressive where somebody takes the time to um, experience restaurant and especially know um, about us and know about me or um, our operation uh, to a certain detail the more detail the better because we can sit there and talk about the foie gras dish that's on the menu or the you know the pork belly and SBK if we can relate to that in each other that says that at least I can spend a little bit of time with you without going crazy so um I had a girl interview with me four years uh, three years ago and she had no culinary background um, and she said, look, I'm tired of doing what I'm doing, and I want to come in and see if I enjoy this. Um, and it turned out she wasn't the best chef. She wasn't really great in the kitchen, but she ended up just loving being there. And she now it manages uh, La Patisserie, and she's been with me ever since. But she just had a way of saying it that was like, I'm here. I just tell me what to do. I'm willing to do it. And... Let's see where it goes from there. And it was it's worked out great. You know, when people are calm, cool, collected, knowledgeable, yet at the same time obviously have that drive that it's going to take to push themselves every single day, um, I think that's probably all those things put together, the package deal, those really impress me. Of course it does. I mean, I think in an industry where we're trying to kind of grow things and um, support local businesses and stuff like that, that it's important that they understand that you might not have access to this particular ingredient year-round and you have to know how to make substitutions or you have to figure out what to do with stuff that is in season or isn't in season um, or not use stuff that isn't in season. So yeah, it's definitely important. I definitely think it does, um, and especially in Austin, you know, it's a very, you know, farm, um, local environment. You know, we try to use local local goods. We don't have necessarily as uh, good of a community relationship with the farmers as I would as I want right now. We're still working towards that, but yeah, that your students know that. You know, maybe that they're familiar with farmers. I think it gives them a whole broader knowledge and um, view of the whole culinary world, especially in today's times, that they can, you know, they can see the restaurant or maybe they will allow them to go into the farm aspect. Uh, I definitely think it's a smart decision and a, potentially an edge. Well, I think it's a tremendous program because it shows, you know, the students both sides of the equation, which nowadays is so important, right? Um, just last weekend, I spent the weekend with Mike Richardson at Richardson Farms out in Rockdale, Texas, and fostering those relationships and seeing the process come from the pig in the pasture to ultimately the plate is very, very important. So you guys are doing a tremendous job with that. 
Yeah, I mean, any, you know, with the Scafi offering those very specific um, uh, uh, curriculum, uh, the classes like that, I definitely think offers um, a great um, advantage point um, to just the ever-changing world of the culinary field. Um, to not do those, I think, is a disservice um, to the culinary students that are going through it because those are the um, very real operational things that they're going to experience in the field. Um, however, that being said, if the student just shows up to the class and just attends and puts it on his resume, though I went to the nose to tail thing. When I ask him about that experience, if he has a real idea and passion or learns something from that, that's much more impressive and much more um, tangible than simply writing, oh, I attended this or I went to this. It's really about um, what they say and how they, um, their experience that they gain from those particular classes. Yes, you signed up to go. But why did you go and what did you learn from that experience and what's your what's your true passion behind it um that's much more important than something on a resume like that i think farm to table uh is a huge huge deal you know going being able to go to the farmer's market uh as much as possible you know getting to know um the farmers around the town the different local produce what's in season you know you go once a week or even more than that and you get to you'll have an idea of what's out there what's fresh you're like oh yeah i remember this last year so this is means oh this is when this is in season you know getting together with like you know local farmers around here you know boggy creek and johnson backyards and you know all kinds of you know those farmers and farm table and sustainability for sure you know being Eco safe for the environment, you know, Austin's really big about that. Go local, all good stuff. And I really do, it does give them an edge to, you know, if they really grasp it. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. I think that anything that you do to give more information to, to any cook or server or guest in any environment will benefit them. And I think that if you give everyone the right tools, it's up to them to decide how they're going to take it. I've been uh, really happy um, with the experience with the Scott Fay students. I think that uh, certainly through our um, relationship and um, the uh, the tasks that were at hand through some some pretty major events, I was very happy and pleased with their performance and thought that they showed up ready to work and um, certainly had a good time, which is very important. But also, when it was time to work, they put their heads down and, and really followed direction and executed the tasks at hand. I was very impressed, very happy with their performance. Mm -hmm. they, you know the ones that we've come to the restaurant. They've they've been good. They've uh, m most of them have definitely shown that they're uh, passionate about cooking. You know that they want to be they want to be in the restaurant type of world. They definitely want to be working with food. Um, they've they've shown that they you know can move fast. And they've been pretty quick learners and. And it's like they'll they'll make a mistake a couple times, you know, and that's okay. It's like, but they they learn from it, and it's like they don't they're treating it as a job, and even if they're not getting paid at that moment. And we've hired uh, several of the several of your students. You know, they're eager to learn. They're dedicated. They're they, you know they want they know what they're getting themselves into. They know. It's work. It's going to be work. You know that uh, when they come in, uh, they're pretty much at that level, and then they have to grow from there. And in in that that's person situation, uh, he's done incredible, and just he keeps growing and growing every day. So I expect that from every student. I think it's how hard they work in school that really comes through and the stuff that um, our good ones have come with has just been amazing and their ability to kind of work themselves into the kitchen and continue to excel um, it still amazes me. We love having uh, students come in our kitchen we actually we prefer um, students just coming out of school or cooks without much experience we find that it allows us to teach them our systems and who we are and so we've had great luck and great success utilizing students from the school. You know we've uh, fostered se several Escoffier uh, externs and m the majority of them have been very successful. I would say that they have more drive than others uh, because it's a smaller, a, a tighter knit school. I think you guys do a tremendous job of kind of instilling that work ethic in, in them.